Everyone in Lavaca County, you're watching the very first episode of Have You Heard, brought to you by Hallettsville High School. My name is Brant Chilishek, and today joining me is Grace Henneke. Coming this Tuesday, voters are encouraged to stop by Hofer's and Country Bakery for National Voter Registration Day. And in the news, Lavaca County's four newspapers are looking for a creative person to build effective advertisements for our customers. Help the editorial staff put news pages together and help maintain our growing website. This is not a remote position. All work will be done in our office in Hallettsville. Stay tuned for your local weather and sports. Now to take a look at your upcoming weather for the Kalachi Fest. The weather will be a high 97 and a low of 71 with partly clouded skies. So no reason for you not to come out and support since there's a low chance of rain. Continue with the week. Sunday through Tuesday, the heat continues. But don't worry, Lavaca County. The rest of the week will be cooling off with highs of 80s and lows of 60s. That's all for your weekly weather. Make sure to tune in next week for more local weather updates. Now we'd like to send it over to Cannon Smith with the sports around the area. Welcome to the sports on Have You Heard. We're covering your favorite Lavaca County teams. I'm Cannon Smith, and we're going to start off with a recap of football on September 16th. The St. Paul Cardinals are now 2-2 two two on their season, highlighted by their comeback win against Texas Military Institution. After going down a half 35-14, St. Paul stormed back to score 24 unanswered points in the second half to give the Cardinals their first win on the season. This past week, the Cardinals beat Legacy Prep Christian Academy 49-6 for their second win, in which they won in similar fashion. After Legacy Prep Christian scored a touchdown to make the game 8-6 early in the first quarter, St. Paul scored 41 unanswered points to win the game 49-6. This Friday at 7.30, St. Paul will take on Geneva out of Bernie and Shiner to look for their third win on the season. Number four, Shiner defeated East Bernard Friday 49-7 and proved them to 3-1 on the season. Texas A&M committed Dalton Brooks at 14 carries for 163 yards and three touchdowns. He also had 21 tackles and a forced fumble. The Comanche season so far has been highlighted by their close win against home, on their homecoming against Poth, in which they went for a two-point conversion to win the game 22-21. Shiner now has won three in a row, after, and after dropping their first game to Hallisville, Shiner has outscored their opponents 119-28 since week two. Shiner will take on Ganado Friday at 7.30 in Ganado to start their district play. The Sacred Heart Indians won Friday against Luis 14-10, improving to 2-2 two two on, on their season. The Indians' Russian leader, Brady Haas, had seven carries for 67 yards and scored one of their touchdowns. Cole Duty also threw a nine-yard touchdown pass to Ty Nashka. Their leading receiver was Nick Anderson, who had one reception for 47 yards. The Indian season so far is highlighted by their back-to-back -back wins to make the team 2-2 two two after starting the season 0-2. The Indians will play Coffer out of Riviera Friday at 7.30 in Hallsville. Number 9, Hallsville, defeated Como Piper 25 to nothing on their homecoming. Leading tacklers for the Bramos were Matthew Shannon and Jay Sean Price with 8 tackles each. Jay Sean was also the leading rusher for the Bramos with 84 yards on 13 carries. Demarion Austin was the Bramos' second leading rusher with 43 yards on only 7 carries. Brand Trilosek also completed 4 passes for 76 yards. Hallsville's season so far was highlighted by their duo of running backs Jay Sean and Demarion Austin who are the top two in their district in rushing yards, and by their upset win to then number one, Shiner, in which they were predicted to lose by 21 points. Houseville won that game 14-7. Houseville is also 4-0 for the first time since 2016. Houseville will take on Southwest Christian out of Fort Worth Friday at 7.30. They're meeting halfway at the University of Mary Hardin and Baylor. Now we're moving over to volleyball. We'll start with the Lady Cardinals. Recent wins came against Yorktown, in which they won in two sets. The Lady Cardinals are set to play Hallettsville Sacred Heart this Thursday at 6 p.m. and wish they wish to continue their district success. Number 10, Shiner Lady Comanches took down Industrial Friday in three sets. Led by Riley Vakura's 34 kills against the Lady Cobras, the Lady Comanches went forward and never looked back as they didn't drop a game against the Lady Cobras. The Lady Comanches are 19-8 and, and look to have a historic season as this is their first time in school history being ranked in the top 10 in 2A volleyball. The Lady Comanches will take on Luis today at 6 p.m. in Shiner. The Sacred Heart Indianettes lost last Thursday against Concordia. This loss now sets the Indianettes with a record of 6-9. Sacred Heart did take a win against Van Vleck, which is a UIL 3A team, in which they won in, th in two sets. The Indianettes will face Shiner St. Paul this Thursday at 6 p.m. in Shiner. 
The household Lady Bramos lost to Yoakum last Friday in four sets. Household is now 8-12 and 12 overall and 1-2 and in district. The Lady Bramos season so far is highlighted by their upset win against district opponent Edna in four sets. The Bramos are led by senior Kinley Hall who had 13 kills against the Yoakum Bulldogs and has had an overall amazing season. And that's it for the sports edition. Tune in next week for your local sports updates. Thank you, Candace Smith, for the last week's sport updates. We would like to wish luck to all sports this coming week. Ramos are 4-0 for the first time in a while. They're doing pretty great, yeah. And now we'd like to jump over to Cody Bible for the Farm and Ag Report from the past week. Good morning, Mavaca County. My name is Cody Bible, the Houtsville FFA Vice President, and I'm excited to have you joining me for this week's installment of Ag in Your World, brought to you by Houtsville FFA. We have another exciting week of activities for our FFA members at Houtsville High School. Last Monday, our members participated in the first regular meeting of the chapter, led by Jet Long, the Houtsville FFA president. We had a great turnout with 82 registered members in attendance. Our members got to experience some exciting team building activities and get pumped for the fall season of contests in the FFA. Last Tuesday, we hosted our first junior FFA meeting of the year, held after school. Our 3rd through 8th grade junior FFA members elected new officers for the year and played a few fun games to get to know each other. And last, but certainly not least, on Friday night, September 16th, the Houtsville FFA hosted the homecoming concession stand at the Brahma football game. This was a great fundraiser for our club and we cooked up 720 of our famous hamburgers for all of Brahma Nation to enjoy. Our next segment is brought to you by the Houseville FFA Commercial Steer Exhibitors. It's a market day report. Feeder cattle trading was down over the last week with a cash market at about $1.81 per pound. Live cattle, on the other hand, have held steady for the past week at about $1.41 per pound. Lean hogs are down about $0.08 cents per pound over the week, closing about $0.98 cents per pound. And the corn outlook is improving for farmers up to about $7.75 per bushel for the week. Talk about an earful. Every week, we like to shine a light on our FFA members, and this week's FFA spotlight is for President Jet Long. Jet is a senior at Houtsville High School. He's been a lifelong participant in agriculture, 4-H, and FFA events. While in Houtsville FFA, Jet has participated in market steer shows, commercial steer shows, meets judging, several leadership development events, and he's been an officer for three years. Jed is always willing to lend a hand to those around him and encourage new FFA members to jump in and have fun. Jed plans to attend school for an ag business degree and help grow his family's ranching and custom farming business when he graduates. And we'll close with the ag news of the week. Did you know that Walmart's in the beef business? I don't mean they just sell some meat and grocery products. This week, Walmart has invested in a Nebraska rancher-owned processing plant. The goal is to have a steady supply of affordable beef products to offer consumers in their stores. This follows a similar partnership for Walmart with 44 Farms Angus Ranch in Cameron, Texas several years ago. This partnership is great for consumers and great for the ag industry as well. That brings us to the end of our time here today with you. Thanks for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you next week for Ag in Your World Brought to you by the Houseville FFA. Today on Have You Heard, our special guest is Ms. Joanne from the Chamber of Commerce. Hi. And how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How about y'all? I'd say it's We're good. pretty We're good. excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. So, you know, thank you for joining us just so we could ask you some questions and get to know about the community better. So, I guess first we'd like to start off how many contestants entered the pageant this year? Uh, well, for our Miss Houseville Scholarship pageant, we had nine. Miss Howitzville, we had two junior Miss. Uh, our young Miss that we added last year, we had five. Our little Miss, we had five. And then our little Mister, we had four contestants. Oh, that was a pretty good turnout, I would say. It was good, yes. And then? Uh, who, was, who was crowned uh, Miss Howitzville and who are the court members? Uh, our 2022-23 Royal Court, Miss Howitzville, is Miss Shallon Harrell. Our junior Miss, is Ava Shimek. Our young miss is Quinn Harper De La Rosa. Our little miss is Braley Hanslick. 
and our little mister is Silas Stacy. So, little miss, how, how old is the youngest one? Uh, well, you can be in the first or second grade. Okay. Uh, we added actually adding second grade last year uh, to give more people an opportunity to be in the Hallettsville pageant. Okay. Well, congrats to them. Did everything go as planned for y'all? As far as you know? Uh, it did. Uh, you know, you always have bumps in the road sometimes. If, if it were in the perfect world, everything would be perfect. But uh, overall, I think everything went well. So jumping over to the chamber now, um, to be a member of the chamber, how can the community member get involved in that? Uh, well, all you need to do is come by the chamber or call us. Um, we have uh, our member uh, is in categories, so there's uh, individual members, there's rental property members, uh, then small, medium, and large business. Um, so it's just a back to figuring out where you're placed, and we pay you pay a yearly membership. Um, and yeah, we'd love to have members. Uh, we, our chamber, you know, we are the marketing engine for Hallettsville, so uh, we want to be able to market our businesses. So. Come on and see us, and let's get you signed up. What are the benefits of joining the Commerce? Uh, the benefits, we put you on our website. Uh, you are listed in our Hallettsville magazine every year. Um, we have social media, of course, that we share. Um, and then, um, well, just as your business, if you have specials, we have an e-newsletter that we can advertise you in. Um, we can put your business cards uh, in the chamber. Uh, and when people call us, you are the first ones that we recommend. Um, so there is an advantage uh, of being a chamber of the mem member of the chamber. Excuse me. Kind of thinking way back, how did the Kalachi Fest kind of first start here in Hallettsville? Uh, to my recollection, um, the Kalachi Fest started in 1995 uh, by a group um, of chamber members, um, and it started at the American Legion Hall, actually in the park. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then eventually got moved to the KC Hall. Okay. And obviously things have changed since then. So what can people look forward to this week or this coming weekend for a Kalachi Fest? Uh, well, our Kalachi Fest is this Saturday, September 24th. Uh, so it starts out with a 5K fun run off um, on the city by the city hall. Um, and then our parade starts at 10. And then at the hall, we'll have arts and craft booths, food booths. We have a 42 domino tournament. Uh, we also have a barbecue cook-off. We have a car show. Um, we do a kolache baking demo by our 2022 kolache queen, who is Miss Davy Spade. Uh, we also have a kolache eating contest that begins at 2 p.m. Uh, at the Beer Garden Pavilion. And it's in age groups, so y'all come out and see who can eat uh, the mini kolaches uh, in the shortest time. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, we have music. Um, we've got the Doika Brothers starting at 11, then the Czechaholics at 3, and then we'll finish the night with the Shiner Second Wind at 7.30. So you will be doing the 5K, correct? I know. <laughs> uh, I wish I could. One day I will. <laughs> Maybe in the closet. Maybe so. Yeah. Maybe so. Okay. So what is your uh, favorite event of the chamber <clears throat> that the chamber sponsors? Um, my favorite event, actually, uh, we host the state uh, champion, Texas State Championship 42 Domino Tournament the first weekend in March. Um, and that is my favorite. We have people coming from all over Texas and even out of state uh, that love our 42 domino tournament and it's just great to meet different people and they just love our little city so the 42 is my favorite and you know just want to end off what are some major things that are coming up with the chamber and what can the community members look forward to that's coming up uh well of course we have our um fall citywide garage sale that's coming up saturday october 8th you actually have until next friday to sign up um, let's see, then it is, we have our wine walk, December 10th. Um, and then of course, Festival of Lights is not the chamber event, but you know, it's a great community event and that's Thanksgiving weekend. So we love to see the courthouse lighted up. <laughs> Plenty of fun events coming, you know, forward here in Hallettsville. And we thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yes, thank you, thank thank you, you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. So, um, so y'all come be a chamber member. <laughs> <laughs> If you, your business, or organizations have any upcoming news or events that you would like mentioned on Have You Heard, 
Email us at Brahma's News Network at HISDBrahma.org or message us on Facebook. Once again, I'm Brant Chilishek. And I'm Grace Enneke. Have a great week in Lavaque County and tune in next week on Have You Heard.